Hello and welcome to my presentation for the Engineering Design Show. I'm Christopher Sherman and today I will be presenting my work on pest and disease detection in kiwi fruit orchards. This is my Engineering Design Show poster and we'll be going through it in this video. Now for a little bit of background, New Zealand is the third largest kiwi fruit exporter in the world, exceeding over 2.5 billion New Zealand dollars last year alone. Despite this, the industry is still vulnerable to threats such as pest and disease. The PSA outbreak that happened a few years back worldwide is a very good example of this. The outbreak was so bad in some places such as Italy, it resulted in 30% loss in harvest yield. <clears throat> Current detection methods predominantly employ the use of traps to entice pests. There are two types, manual detection, which involves periodically checking the trap, and passive detection, which employs a camera to monitor the traps remotely, or using an autonomous smart detection method Unfortunately, these systems are heavily reliant on the effectiveness of the bait, the location of deployment, and if no autonomous monitoring system is in place, the rate at which the traps are checked. Another obvious flaw is that these cannot be used for the, the detection of disease. What about, the mo what about a mobile module with machine learning to allow for dynamic detection instead of passive detection? The objectives of this project are to design and implement a prototype system which can detect pest and disease. This design must consider various things such as mobility and coverage of the orchard. The system must also employ machine learning. The second objective is to stress test the system, swapping out the cameras used and focusing on the effect of varying the distance from the canopy of the orchard and varying the environmental brightness to determine the performance and limitations of the current camera technology. Instead of making a machine learning algorithm based on every possible pest or disease, a single pest was chosen to narrow the scope of the algorithm. The brown marmorated stink bug was selected as it's medium sized and it does pose significant risk to the kiwi fruit industry. The data set for these stink bugs were obtained using the help of a site called iNaturalist and the machine learning algorithm implemented is the YOLO v4 darknet algorithm due to performance and accuracy reasons. However, before the captured images could be input into the algorithm, the images were split into smaller sections to increase the scale of the relatively small stink bugs. This is done by taking smaller overlapping sections to ensure that the stink bug doesn't get split in half. The distance testing performed involved the system being moved further and further away from the scene and determining its effect on the machine learning algorithm's accuracy. And lastly, the brightness testing was performed in by mounting the camera under a broken off branch and moving it to areas of differing light levels. The camera is selected with Bezel Ace, which has a wide field of view, which is $2,000, and GoPro Max, which has a full 360 degree field of view, and only costs $800. The intended architecture for this prototype, when it is complete, involves coupling, coupling captured images and GPS location data. The data for testing purposes was supposed to be provided by another project, the Qfruit robot, but it will be coupled in the future. If there is a detection in the system, the image will be kept and the information will be uploaded to be shown on the map of the orchard with a notification sent to the person monitoring the system. The person receiving this image can then review it to either dismiss it or take further action. This online system means that all the data is accessible from anywhere in the world. Although all that functionality has not been fully implemented, most of it can be seen working here. The program is started, the scene is captured, processed, and then the information is displayed. Now, from this, we can see that the system is on average 77% confident in its detections. I have also included a different scene just to show the system working again. Now for the results. As you can see, as expected, when the camera moves further from the scene, the confidence scores mentioned above also decrease on average for both the Basler and the GoPro, with the Basler showing better results at being able to detect all the stink bugs consistently regardless of the distance from the scene, whereas the GoPro starts to miss the detections. With regards to the brightness, we see that the Basler's correct detections com consistently remain above the incorrect detections, whereas the GoPro starts to show false detection increase as the brightness increases. And this can be further seen in this precision recall curve. Now, recall refers to the number of stink bugs detected in relation to the number of stink bugs in the scene, whereas the pre precision refers to the number of stink bugs related in relation to the total number of detections. 
As you can see, the bezel completely outperforms the GoPro in this regard. Although this project does show promise, both cameras do have desirable and undesirable traits which can be seen here in this table. If there's no monetary constraints and performance is favored, then the bezel is the right option. However, if a system which is both smaller and cheaper is considered, then the GoPro might be a better choice. Neither is ideal for this purpose. The next steps include attaching it to a robot for two weeks and getting loads of data to test with, and to make a machine learning model representative of the environment which it is used in. Furthermore, speed-related data will also be required to effectively determine which camera is better. And then vary, varying the machine learning models may also show interesting results aiming for either a faster system for edge deployment or a more accurate one. Further steps taken should be a mechanical mount for the cameras or including additional cameras. Thank you very much and goodbye.